Okay. So, we will um, take a few problems um, which are itself an interesting problem in itself is a very interesting problem and also it involves some other concepts uh, in connection with these sets. So, let us see the first problem. Uh, define the Cantor set Cantor set and so that and prove the following and prove the following say no one or a part the Cantor set is closed set. Cantor set is a closed set. Second, we wanted to show that Cantor set contains Cantor set contains no non-empty open interval. Cantor set contains or uh, contains no non-empty no non empty no non empty n o n non empty open interval edge subset edge a subset as third point which you want to prove that Cantor set is an uncountable set Cantor set uh, uh, the length of the Cantor set you can say the, the Cantor set uh, has a length the total length of the Cantor set uh, total length total length of the uh, Cantor set you can say Cantor set uh, is 0. In fact, the measure of the Cantor set is 0 we wanted to show this is uh, that length or we will say the measure is 0. The measure of the Cantor set instead of saying total length we will just say the measure of Cantor set is 0. Cantor set is having length 0 length 0. Okay and d the measure of the Cantor set I will uh, because we have not discussed the measure that is why I wanted to avoid this term measure ok and then fourth one is Cantor set Cantor set uh, is an uncountable set is uncountable. So, we wanted to establish these following four things about the Cantor sets let us see the solution. So, first let us define the Cantor set. So, what is the Cantor sets? The construction of Cantor set. Let us consider a closed interval 0 1 divide this interval into 3 parts 1 third two third and then remove the open interval and remove the open interval open interval one uh, middle one open interval uh, one third open middle interval one third two third so, close interval 0 1 we are dividing first into 3 parts and removing this middle portion uh, <coughs> or the middle open interval we are removing. So, the set which obtained so we get a set let it be denoted by f 2 or say f 1 edge the remaining set will be 0 1 third close interval union of 2 third 1. So, in the first step 
what we are doing we are taking a close interval 0 1 and from there we are dropping the middle portion this portions we have dropped. So, the remaining one will be this interval 0 1 third and then uh, 2 third 1. Okay? This is our remaining interval and this we said denoted by f 1. Now, what we are doing is now we next again subdivide these intervals the, the one into 3 parts and let it be divided by this interval again in 3 parts this interval also again in 3 parts and then from here we drop this one we drop this portion this middle open portions. So, what we do is we next remove the second step is we next remove the open middle interval remove the open middle third a uh, middle third of each of middle third uh, we open middle open middle third of each each of the two closed each of the two closed intervals in f 1 means we are dividing further these remaining intervals into three parts and then out of these three of intervals we are removing the middle one open intervals and to get that set to obtain obtain the set say which we denoted by f 2 as 0 1 by 9 union 2 by 9 1 third union 2 third 7 by 9 union 8 by 9 1 okay that's what so basically this is uh, if we have it this is structure suppose i have 0 1 then what we do first we are removing this is say 0 oh, 1 by 9 2 by 9 2 by 9 3 by 9 that is 1 third uh, 1 by 9 2 by 9 and 3 by 9 let it be then 4 by 9 5 by 9 6 by 9 and then 7 by 9 8 by 9 so these are the so what the remaining portions was earlier we have already removed one third two third this portion was already dropped is it not this portion was already dropped this was dropped then in this interval we are dropping this portion we are dropping from here this portion. So, these portions are dropped. So, remaining portions will be this 0 1 by 9 okay. then this portion is dropped. So, 2 by 3 and then 1 by 9 this portion then this portion is dropped. So, here 6 by 9 means 2 by 3 then 7 by 9 and this portion is dropped. So, this one is uh, then this one is 8 by 9 8 by 9 and 1. So, basically these intervals are there close intervals are left union of these we denote by f 2. <coughs> okay. Now, each of this f 2 we see that uh, we see that f 2 is the union of union of 2 to the power 2 that is 4 close intervals close intervals each of which 
each of which each of the form each of the form k over 3 square comma k plus 1 over 3 square is it not because this is also k is 0. So, you are getting 0 uh, and 1 by 3 square when you are taking k is 2 you are getting this one uh, k is equal to uh, I think this is 1 by 1 by 3 here is 1 by 3. Okay. So, 1 by 3. So, you are getting this one and similarly when you take this k is equal to 2 uh, you are getting uh, k equal to say 6 you are getting this one k equal to 8 you are getting this one like this. So, all these of this form and then the length of this if you look the basically the length of the first one dropped one which you have dropped what is the length of the dropped interval is one third and here and only one number of intervals we are dropping number of interval which it dropped is one. Now, here the number of intervals number of length of these intervals the number of intervals dropped is how many 1 and 2 and length of each interval dropped dropped interval will be what length of each dropped interval will be 1 by uh, say 3 to the power p. So, each one will be of length uh, say uh, this one 1 by 3 square is it not. So, that is the first interval 2 intervals each length of uh, 1 by 3 square 9 length we are dropping for this okay, like this. So, continue this way. So, if we continue we continue this way then what we will next remove step third we next remove we next remove the open middle third middle third thirds of each thirds of each of these sets to get F 3 to get F 3 to get F 3 which is the union of two to the power three that is eight close intervals. close intervals and like this we continue this way continue this way. So, what we get that in the nth step if we take then then an nth step then f n at the nth step has has been constructed has uh, uh, 2 to the power n inter 2 to the power n intervals close intervals of course to the close intervals intervals of the form of the form k over 3 to the power n k plus 1 over 3 to the power n plus 1 like this and then we obtain then we obtain the set or and then f n is the union of 2 to the power n intervals intervals of the form this one. Then we obtained the set f 3 the set f n plus 1. Uh, by removing the middle again by removing the open middle 
of in middle third of in middle third of each of these intervals. intervals and like this see then what is Cantor set the Cantor set Cantor set denoted by say capital F is the intersection is the intersection of the sets of the sets F n when n is a integer uh, so set of uh, natural number of positive integers obtained by successive by successive removal removal of open third intervals open thirds uh, open middle third open middle thirds uh, middle thirds starting with the close interval 0 1. So, this set f will be the Cantor set. So, so basically the Cantor set will be the collection of all the end points of these uh, these removed intervals. So, in fact, we get since the closer, so we know. So, basically, this uh, set is the collection of all the um, points which are the uh, which are the uh, coronal points of these uh, deleted intervals. Okay. Now, we wanted to establish these results. The first result says the Cantor set is a closed set, which we want to show. So, now first is since Cantor set f is the intersection of f n, n is 1 to infinity a countable intersection of f n and since each f n is closed is a closed interval is a union of closed intervals is it not and closed intervals finite union of is a finite union of closed intervals. So, each f n is closed is closed and when you take the countable intersection of the closed set then it is closed. So, the countable intersection of f n 1 to infinity is closed. Hence, the Cantor set f is a closed set. So, this is the first we wanted to prove. Second one we wanted to show that <laughs> Cantor set contains no non empty intervals as a subset and then length of this uh, Cantor set or measure of the set is 0. Okay. So, suppose um, what is our open B part the total length of F n the total length of F n is basically what is nothing but the 2 by 3 n because if you look that one the first one interval is of length when you choose the f 1 the f 1 this length is 1 third plus 1 third. So, it is equal to 1 third plus 1 third that is 2 by 3 when n is 1 it is 2 by 3 when n is 2 the total length is coming to be this <coughs> n is 2. So, what is this is this is 1 by 9 1 by 9 1 by 9 1 by 9 the four intervals of length 1 by 9. So, it is 2 square by 3 square that is when n is 2 it is 2 square by 3 square. So, 4 by 9. So, similarly when f n comes it length will be 2 by 3 uh, power n. So, in general. Now, if suppose if suppose f contains if f contains a suppose f contains a non empty non empty open intervals 
say j of say a b, then f is the intersection of all these open intervals. So, obviously, f 1 covers f 2 cover f n and so on. So, basically we say this interval a b will be so since and since j which is this open interval is contained in f n for all n this is true is it not for all n j is contained in this. So, the corresponding so we must have must have the length of this is b minus a which is positive must be less than or equal to the length of this f n, but as n tends to infinity this right hand side of this goes to 0 the right hand side goes to 0. So, this implies that a is equal to b it means we do not get any intersection. So, j is empty j is an empty set empty hence a contradiction, hence a contradiction, because what we assume that it uh, f contains a non empty open interval. So, which is not true contradiction, hence the Cantor set will not contain any open non empty open interval uh, interval as a subset. Now, third part is the measure of this Cantor set, measure of Cantor set is 0. In fact, I do not want to introduce measure what is the measure? suppose I take the interval a b then when we say a b is interval open interval close interval the length of the interval is b minus a. So, that is called the measure of the interval. Okay. Similarly, when we say other set when the set is there then it is difficult to find out the interval because if it say set is scattered then and lying in between the interval a b then if you take b minus a then the length of the set or the major uh, length is not exactly same because it is more what it will contain some more point which is not available in the set. So, in order to get the measure of this set we introduce the concept of the measure in terms of the length and in fact, when we say measure of the set then this is the infimum of measure of a set a means it is denoted by a it is the infimum value of sigma the length of the interval i n 1 to infinity such that the countable union of i n covers a where i n is a intervals open interval or semi closed intervals which covers i n i n s are semi closed all open intervals intervals containing this. So, when you take the length of the interval is possible find the sum and take the infimum over all such i n s we get this infimum exists then we say it is a measure. So, in nutshell or in the rough sense we say measure of the interval is nothing but the length of the interval. Since the set A f which is a Cantor set contains the points basically the points end points of the removed interval. So, what we want to so the length of the total set is 0 the measure of this set is 0. So, let us see the the total length of the removed interval okay. the Cantor set f is basically is obtained is obtained by <coughs> dropping the middle uh, the open middle thirds when you divide the whole close interval into the three parts and opening and then middle third you are dropping. So, is obtained by dropping this one. So, remaining one is nothing but the n Cantor set when n is sufficiently large is obtained by this and for n is sufficiently large middle third in successive uh, middle third of uh, this is it not. So, that is what intersection of f n that is the intersection of f n will be intersection of f n 1 to infinity that will be the Cantor set is it not that is f where f n's are the remaining one and then we take the intersection. So, when you drop the middle one then what happens to this in the first case f 1 the length of the dropped 
interval that is one third two third is one third the in case of m2 the length of the dropped interval is two third and number of the intervals and number of the interval is one here the number of the intervals is 2 then continue this so in case of fn when you are taking the fn then basically it is the length of the dropped interval will be 1 by 3 to the power n plus 1 3 to the power n this is number is 1 sorry this one and then each one is one and but the length will be uh, f to 3 square sorry 3 square number is 2. So, here when it is uh, say in that second case the number of the interval will be 2 to the power n like this. So, it is 1. So, the total length the total length of the removed interval intervals is nothing but what one third plus two over three square plus two square by three q and so on plus two to the power n by three to the power n plus one and so on. <coughs> Basically this is equal to one third sigma n is zero to infinity two by three power n. Now, if I add this is a geometric series, the geometric series the first term is 1. So, it is 1 third 1 over a minus r and the length is coming to be 1. So, it means when the close interval is there from the close interval the length of the close interval from where we have started is 1 and the dropped interval is also having length 1 and the remaining one is the cantor set. Therefore, the total length of the cantor set is 0. The total length of the cantor set is 0. That is measure of the set is 0. Is clear? Now, next the last one which we want to show is the D part. The cantor set is uncountable. is uncountable. Okay. <coughs> As we seen the cantor set cancel set contains all all of the end points all of the end points of the removed open interval. open intervals and these points and these points uh, are of the form are of the form 2 to the power k over 3 to the power k n of 3 to the power n where k is 0 1 2 up to say n for each n for each n. The collection of these points is the cantor set. So, we wanted to show this cantor set is uncountable. Okay. So, these are infinite first thing is the cantor set is an infinite set because there are so many points all available. So, it is an infinite set clearly cantor set is an infinite set. Okay. Infinite set. Now, let us take if we take any point x belongs to the interval 0 to 1, then we can since each point x belongs to a can be represented represented uh, internally form internally that is 
with the base 3 with the base 3 and its expansion will be edge expansion will be x equal to sigma n is 1 to infinity n over 3 to the power n where each n each n is either 0 or 1 or 2 any point in the closed interval 0 1 a real number we can express it in the a decimal expansion in that expansion in the tunnel expansion with the base 3 as well. So, we can write this form as a 1 by 3 a 2 by 3 square a 3 and the where a 1 a 2 a n may be 0 1 or 2. Okay. This will be done. Now, if x lies in one of the it is observed it is also observed that if x lies in that if x lies in one of the removed one of the removed open intervals open interval <laughs> Uh, in one of the removed measure, then, then at least, uh, then ANs will be one for some n. For example, suppose I take the interval, the each point. Suppose I take, for example, each point in the interval one third, two third. This is the dot interval H first term a 1 is 1. Similarly, the end points of the removed interval similarly. So, this is true for each x uh, it is observed that you can write it that uh, each x each x that lies that lies in one of the open interval uh, h has a n s to be 1 for some n this is 2. Now, in the interval uh, say end points further the end points of the end points of the removed interval say 1 third 2 third have two possible tunnelly expansion have two possible tunnelly expansion possible tunnelly expansion expansion one having one having no ones no ones and set other may be some ones or two. For example, for example, if I take this one third, the expansion of the one third internally will be 0 0.1 0 0 0 0 third is. If I take the same one then we can also put it in this form 0 2 2 2 if we are approximately will get one. So, one of this uh, expansion will involve ones and others may not have a ones also. Okay. So, at least one will have no uh, ends will not be one. Okay. So, this one. So, what we want is now we choose that expansion if we choose and these are the end points are in the uh, are in cantor sets. So, now we choose the expansion we choose the expansion of the points of Cantor set x of expansion of the point say x of Cantor set uh, in such a way such that its tunnelly expansion tunnelly expansion expansions 
has has no ones no ones okay that's we wanted to have it no ones that is the ternary expansion will involve n which may be either 0 or 2 for all n belongs to n in in the ternary expansion of each point of points x belongs to Cantor set. This we are assuming. Okay. Now, define a mapping psi from the Cantor set f to say close interval 0 1 as follows. If I take a point x whose ternary expansion will be 1 to infinity a n 3 to the power n. This is the ternary expansion and what we are doing is we are taking the image of this under psi as the point whose binary representation is this a n by 2 divided by 2 to the power n that is for each x belongs to a that is what we are doing is that is the image of this psi a 1, a 2, a n and so on in ternary expansion sorry and so on this is a ternary expansion of this point in ternary expansion is nothing but the expansion of the same point in binary mode b 1, b 2, b n etcetera in binary 2 where v n will be a n by 2 for all n belongs to n for all n belongs to n. So, this is our means each point I am picking up from here writing down is ternary expansion and then image of this we are taking the image as a binary expansion of the same points okay? binary expansion for this. Okay. So, what we are doing this binary expansion will also be a point in 0 1. So, each point which is in f will have a point in the 0 1 which is in 0 1. So, this psi is a onto mapping okay, from f to f to 0 1. Now, let us suppose the f is countable, suppose f is countable, this Cantor set f is countable. So, if it is countable, then there exists a mapping say uh, phi phi from f to n or n to f 1 to 1 correspondence with the which is 1 1 correspondence on to 1 1 on to 1 1 mapping correspondence for this. So, there exists a psi which is 1 1 from this to this surjection mapping okay, f is countable. So, there is surjection of 1 1 on to. Okay on to. So, if we combine this thing that means, when we combine this then what you are getting is that uh, the composite mapping composition of phi and psi this will a uh, mapping which brings the n to 0 1 and to 0 1 at surjection. This is a surjection mapping on to mapping. So, if we assume f to be countable, then basically this implies that this is f and this are having the surjection. There is a mapping from f to 1 which is surjection 1 1 on 2 a on 2 mapping. So, once it is surjection, then since we have assumed f to be countable, so this implies that 0 1 is a countable set. as we assumed assumed f is countable f is countable this is our assumption but 0 1 is uncountable set what 0 1 set of all real number in between the 0 1 that is continuum is an uncountable set which we have already shown 
so our assumption is wrong therefore this implies that cantor set is uncountable and that's proved the results okay so <coughs> this is what we now another examples which we want to show define the drive sets problem define drive set Def define drive set and so that the relation numbers in 0 1 drive sets and so that so that the rational numbers the rational numbers numbers uh, in the interval 0 1 is a set of second species is a set of second species. So, let us see first what is the drive set and what is the species, species we mean. Uh, uh, drive set if the set S is infinite set then what we do is we uh, can find out the limits of this. We can find out the limit of this uh, uh, set infinite set may have a many limit point or may not have a limit point also depending on the set. So, if the set is infinite set there is a possibility of having the limit points. So, we define the drive set as follows. Okay. The set formed the set formed by the limiting points by the limit points of the set S of the given infinite set infinite set is is non edge non edge the drive set because finite set does not have any limit point that we have already seen. So, that is why we are taking drive sets drive set. So, suppose I take the set S uh, which having say point half minus two third 3 by 4 minus 4 by 5 and so on. Now, the drive set n is denoted by denoted by s this by s this. So, let s be the I will write like let s be an infinite set be an infinite set of points. points then the set form uh, form by the limit points by the limit points of the given infinite set s is known as the drive set and denoted by s test. So, for example, if we take this one then what are the drive set 1 by 2 3 by 4 etcetera the uh, limit point will be 1 and minus 2 by 3 minus limit point will be minus 1. So, this is the drive set having this point. Now, in case if drive set S is itself an infinite set, then there is a possibility of there is a possibility of having limit points of S this and then the collection of these limits points the collection of the limits points of s dash is denoted by is denoted by s double dash and is called and is known as the second the second derivative second drive set of s continue this like this. So, suppose if we continue this. So, if we continue this suppose we have after proceeding n we have the S n comes out to be finite. So, proceeding this way continue 
if the if s dash this is the first drive set s double dash is the second drive set s n is the nth drive set of s these are the drive sets of s and if s n is having finite number of terms and if s n the nth drive set has finite number of points only then we cannot go further we cannot go further that is we are unable to get the limit point of s n and then we stop it here then we say <coughs> we say that set s the set s uh, if it is the s is uh, that set s contains in this next step and it is a drive set s is uh, of order is of order n and is of first category n is of first category that is first species species on the other end on the other end if if s n is again infinite set for large n for large n for large n greater than then s is said to be large n means for every n for every n you can say then s is said to be s is said to be of second species so this is the way so for example the set of rational number if is the set of rational numbers in the interval 0 1 it is of second it is of second species why because the set of limit point of this is the set of rational in the all rationals in the interval 0 1 then set of all irrational will also be the limit point of this and basically this is nothing but the interval 0 1 itself. So, continue this we get every times the drive set is comes out to be the set itself that is this possible to get the limit point of this. So, it is of second category ok. So, that is what we want. Now, then we next problems. So, that problem which we have defined the range. So, the rational number is of second species ok. Then define the dense define dense in itself itself everywhere dense set dense set and dense set with examples. So, let us see the solution for it. Uh, what is our definition for the dense in itself? So, let us see the solution. We define the dense in itself itself a set S is said to be is said to be dense in itself in itself if every point of S is a limit point of S is a limit point of S. If every point of S is a limit point of S, then we say that set is dense. So, in such a case, so if S is a dense set itself, then it is subset then. So, S will always be subset of S dash, because every point of S is the limit point. So, it is the S dash 
will contain all the point of S. Okay, S this. This, for example, if we take the set S as a closed set, set S is the closed set, closed intervals, all may be open intervals, closed intervals, all may be open intervals. These are all dense in itself. Then in itself, okay. Then, then set of rational number is rational number, and the set of irrational number, rational number, set of rational numbers in any interval is dense in itself set of irrational numbers in any interval is dense in itself and like this. Now, we define the everywhere dense set a set S is said to be is said to be everywhere dense if every point of the interval i interval i in which s is contained s is contained is a limiting point limiting point of s means what a, a set is said to be dense everywhere dense if the interval in which s is lies every point of that interval in which s lies must be a my limit point of s for example for example if we take this closed set then uh, for example if we take the closed sets or closed interval s is the closed interval 0 1 then this is everywhere dense because the interval in which it lies will be that set closed interval but if we take this one uh, dense but this is everywhere dense okay everywhere dense because the interval but if we take the set s as the union of these interval 0 1 and then 2 3 if this set if i take collection of all point in between this then this is dense in itself in itself because dense in itself means every point of this is a limit point but is not everywhere dense why is not everywhere dense set because a interval 0 1 0 3 does not contain the point in between 1 and 2 so it's not every point okay dense set. then a set is said to be dense set and lastly dense we say a set s is said to be dense is said to be dense if between if between any two point between any two points of s s there is there is at least one at least one other point of s other point of s then it is a dense for example if we take the for example if we take the interval 2 3 this is our s then this is dense set because between any two point there is a point of the interval but if we take this set say 0 1 comma 2 3 this collection s is not dense is not dense because between any two point we do not get one between one and two the point which is available here. So, that is what is then okay. a set is nowhere dense set a set S is said to be nowhere dense or non dense 
if if there is no interval no interval in which s is dense s is dense for example for example if we take the set of rational numbers 1 1 by 2 1 by 3 this collection is nowhere dense because we cannot get an interval in between this whichever thank you very much thanks